Greetings and salutations. Uh, my name's Marcus. I'm here to play some Code Vein. Alby started his own solo journey with the Last Jedi, so only fair I equally started my own solo journey. Now I should warn that we are currently into tutorial, so I might skip through this a little bit. I have played this enough up to the first boss, so I'm a little bit across what's going to happen. Uh, but only up to the first boss just to try to get a hang of it. Um, unlike Albi, I play a lot of these kind of Souls-esque games, so I'm at least semi-decent at them. But I can't say I'm particularly amazing. So at the moment we're just trying to learn through the different codes in this game, which is what the game's named after in many respects. Um, and starting to learn about the abilities or gifts as they're called. Um, we start off with the fighter, as you can see, uh, which is just going to be some basic hack and slash goodness. Um, I was really excited when this game was announced because it's anime-esque Dark Souls, which sounded right up my alley. Oops, I have to equip a new ability, which is adrenaline. Um, this tutorial, <laughs> when I was doing it earlier, took a fair while. So, started the recording here so you guys can see the cinematics and stuff when they actually start rather than going in completely blind. Um, so if I end up skipping text, I'm trying to roll. Um, and this area is quite quiet, unfortunately. Um, now we're starting to go into the mechanics of effectively the blood. As you can see, I, earlier I used 5, trying to use the adrenaline ability to boost my attack. And with that in mind, I'm going to start trying to get some back by basically hacking and slashing lots of pieces. Now this game does have a stamina bar on the bottom left, as you can see. So it can't just slash for ever in a day, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, it does definitely add to the difficulty of it. Um, I generally, in these kind of games, end up playing a caster. Uh, just because that's what makes most sense to me. Uh, which did make Sakura quite difficult when I was playing that in the past. Um, because I generally am not fantastic with the parrying windows, but at least can block and dodge fairly adeptly, I'd like to hope. Um, I'm going to talk over a lot of this early area, because they are simply describing the basic mechanics of that you can change between the different types of blood codes to get different abilities in this case I've now swapped to fighter uh, from fighter to ranger which gives different stats as you can see so I can no longer equip the heavy axe I had before not that I swapped to it to be fair um, but I now get some new abilities um, there's a stamina increase um, which you can't quite see but at least I have a bayonet which I can play around with and there's some Basic abilities like a dash and a range spell. I'll equip the bayonet, which looks quite nice. Um, and honestly, was the weapon I was having the most fun with in the starting area, at least. Um, it can shoot using your blood points, or Ika as they're calling it. Um, and it's generally quite fast like a sword is anyway so it's a nice intermediate weapon as far as I'm concerned and it's light as buggery which is fantastic because dodging in these games is actually based on much weight you're carrying so the lighter you are the um, easier it is for you to dodge. Now this is the drain mechanic where if you hold and hold X you can do a Drain attack. Um, not that I've ever managed to get this combo drain done. Oh, no, there it is. As I say that. <laughs> okay, so that's just part of the combo now, is it? That makes it easy enough. 
Um, and we didn't use any of the abilities there. Um, literally one of them is a nice dodge. Um, but it feels a little bit weird actually going into activate a dodge rather than just pressing circle. But there are some occasions I'm sure where it would be super handy. Um, the last code we get at the start of the game is caster, which is 100% what I want in these games. Because <laughs> using, abusing caster is the easiest way I generally find of killing bosses, but you need really good stats normally. They try to balance it by making it super late game rather than being a something which is good early on. But as you can see in the bottom right, I've now got 30 as my max eco points rather than just the 16 I had earlier, so I can spam a lot more abilities that way. Which is going to be incredibly useful for me later on. Now, these are effectively the... It will let me do it. Oh, there we go. That seems to have reset it. <laughs> Alright, so we have the ability to effectively unlock new skills in each class, so at the moment we're trying to learn the Blazing Roar, which is, as you can see on the right of the screen, non-physical fire damage. Um, in all honesty, when I see that there is both Pierce and Blood for that, and Crush and Fire for this one, it does worry me a little bit. Um, I just start thinking to myself, this might get complicated later on. but. We'll see how we go. And that's, that's the fire move. As you can see in the bottom right, it's got a bit of a cooldown. Uh, but when I was using it earlier, it was doing some absolutely mad damage compared to everything else. I was sitting for about 100, and that was doing 1,000. That could have been the guys I was using against were weak to fire, which might have done it. Um, the other thing which it hasn't really gone into is the fact that when you use a skill a lot in the main game, you can master it effectively. When you master it, you can use it in other classes. Which is superb, right? But, if you are playing something which can't really use that weapon, it doesn't... Oh, sorry, that skill. Like, if I go get this Roaring Blaze as an example and try putting on Fighter, you might not actually have the stats for it. There is actually stat requirements to them, such as if you have enough intelligence to cast the spell, strength for the weapon, and so the class you pick will highly determine that. Um, and that's something we're going to be trying to balance a fair bit. I say that, but realistically I'm just going to be picking some light weapons and as many caster stuff as possible. However, I will also be trying to max every skill, because that's generally just how I play. Now going to the first cinematic, so I'll be with you in a bit. Ah, oh, after some loading screens I should point out. <laughs> loading in this game, I'm on the PS4 version, because uh, that's what me and my mates all agreed to get. Um, so it's not as nice and fast as it would be if I was on my PC. It still seems to load alright, so it's not horrendous.
あちらです。Alright, um, joining you again, if you think you've missed out on a whole bunch of information, know that it's literally the start of the game, it's pretty straight into it. Um, I should point out, while this is going to be a slow walk to this tree, that the character customization in this game is absolutely fantastic. Um, I haven't really done too crazy with it, but if you go into some of the things online, some people have put some mad amount of work into it and got practically been replicating characters from other games as their main character on this game. Uh, now we're just slowly walking, there's no option to sprint or roll or anything I'm afraid, so this is just a slow transition um, into a similar cinematic. やはりあなたは。さあ、どうぞ。新たな泉と労働力どちらも確保だ<笑>今日はついてるぜたて楽しいお仕事の時間だ So now we're in a nice containment style, looks like. Um, and our character has absolutely no memory. Um, looks like some people are quite scared at the moment. And it looks like we just need to pick up one of these masks 
judging by the nice shiny icon we've got here. Um, I am playing in Japanese, uh, mainly because it's a Japanese game and I like to try to keep the audio based on where it came from, because generally they've put more effort, no, not necessarily more effort, but at least they've tried to match everything to, ma um, to the game, and sometimes English just doesn't match perfectly. But that's generally a personal taste. And sometimes, I think the English in this game is actually pretty good from what I've heard anyway, so it's probably fine to play any of the game, uh, any of them, but there have been a few games where English has been really quite risky. So it looks like if we don't have a mask, we get to turn into a lost. Sounds like it might be a fun way of saying a psychopath, but we'll see what happens. Um, early on there's just a lot of cinematics in this game, just to try to get you into the swing of things. Um, it, it should die down in a little bit, the last cinematic before we actually enter the game proper. And we get to start trying to hunt down some things. Sigino わかるな。血類だろ。そう。この血類を今から探してきてもらう。この先の地下道でな。血税の徴収日まであと少し。だが、今の俺たちに余分な血類なんてない。このままじゃ血も涙もねえ汁場の犬どもに身ぶるに全
Um, but at least our sneak attacks seem to still be doing a fair amount of damage. Um, now that kind of looks like a nice city. place to go. Um, and I'll give you a spoiler alert, because I have tried that when I did uh, my first little bit of playthrough. You will die. Um, not a particularly impressive death either. Um, oh, combo attacks that do still do a fair amount of damage, which is good. Might have to start relying on that until I get a proper Not weapon. Oh, um, which I, seems I've just managed to pick up. Lucky me. Let's see how much damage we can do with a axe, eh? Trimming haze, that's yeah. if we die. Um, hopefully not in this playthrough. <laughs> the playthrough, wow, jeeps. Hopefully not in this episode, let's be realistic. It's a Dark Souls game. Um, I'm probably going to die a ton. But this axe, at least, is doing some work. That's for sure. Oh. Except for the fact that the swing is so long. And I am so not used to those kind of weapons. So hopefully you can get something better. And if I remember correctly, this might be... No, it's not a sword. So I do know we get a sword relatively quickly, which is good, because I'm going to need it. Um, but we'll get there soon. I haven't actually been using any of my blood gifts, kind of deliberately. Uh, just because I think it's more important to practice using a sword at this point. The other thing which I've have read a little bit of guides is I need to practice how to parry, which it's not something I normally do well at all. He's kind of apes, um, so don't expect to see that much. Ooh. Hey, Baronet. Uh, yeah. No time. Yeah. Alright, awesome. Now, I see if I've just lost a few gifts and been shot, so... Uh, one of those two things is good. I'll, uh, not so much, but we'll deal with it. Um, but it, Olivia... Oh, Oliver. Oliver is just absolutely destroying things while I'm kind of trying to get my grips on everything. It has been a little bit since I did the tutorial, well not the tutorial, the gameplay earlier. And even then I wasn't that good because I didn't figure out how to do combos, which are apparently super easy and super useful. Um, you can got the heals, just like in Dark Souls, I got two left. Um, and again, just like in Dark Souls, you get them back from doing a nice rest. So I'm definitely not too worried about this point. I have a nice fast weapon, which helps a ton. Because fast weapons mean I don't have to sit still for half an hour. But I'm definitely doing these attacks. Way too late. Um, it it feels like I should be able to do it as an interrupt, but you just can't, which is why I'm looking like a um, not the smartest person in the world when I'm doing these. I'm not doing too terribly, I don't think. Now we just purified this. It's not actually a save point. It just gives you some mapping data, which is definitely not bad. Um, and to the point, the save point is right there. If you remember seeing this gate earlier. Um, so it's got a new piece of armor. Um, armor seems to have two effects. At the moment, if I hold X, I do this one claw, and that's, don't get me wrong, it looks awesome. If I swap this to Blue Hounds, as the name kind of suggests, we get two, uh, get two cool looking hounds. I can't say I'm 100% across what they do too well at this point, because uh, I swapped it out really quickly last time. Um, when I was in here. Now, the most important thing, as far as I found in this small amount of time I've played it, is you want to learn these new um, new abilities pronto. Not necessarily just specifically for fighter, but just in general. Especially the passives, and you want to look into how they have the proficiency required in the bottom right. So that's how you get it maxed out. In these cases, you just have to have them equip um, and slash things. 
So I'm pretty good at that, so that's gonna equip them both now. And get them leveled out. Good thing is you don't even have to, if it's just kill things, like this one is, you don't even have to use the ability. Uh, which is fantastic if you're in a position where you can't actually use them. This one has equipped it, but apparently not. Um, I probably should in some respects be using at least one of the two, because it does, is an attack buff. And more attack damage is probably going to be useful. Now, let's see. Use this. Seems to have worked. Drained a ton of stamina though. Couldn't see how much damage it did because of the awkward positioning I was standing in. Um, uh, okay, that was completely pointless, but I think I remember what it was for. Now, isn't a sprint as far as I've worked out. If there is, um, I should really look into it. Oh no, there it is. I won. Wow, I'm going well with this. <laughs> I managed to play an entire level without checking for that. Um, great sword. Awesome. Probably a weapon I'm never going to touch, but because I've got a high. I'm on fighter at the moment, might as well swap to it. Just to try it out. It does look pretty cool. Rolls pretty average now. Um, the attack animation seems pretty solid. さっきの人じゃないか。どうした。どこか怪我でも。うわ。ついて <laughs> あ、大丈夫だっていいから。ほら。君は血流を探さないと。あの子が待ってるから。All right. So he's taken a hit to his mask, uh, based on what the other guys are saying, and the uh, lost. Uh, he might not be too long for this world, but we'll have to see what happens in a little bit. Um, but currently stands at least, he's staying behind, so I'm going to have to solo the rest of it. Uh, unless we find someone else to potentially help out with. Um, nice little daggers. And five people there, just sounds like a bad time. See if we can sneak up behind him. Right, slowly is probably the best option. Um, and this just looks pretty awesome. Seems I've done a little bit of damage as well. Um, and oh, look at that. Not even a chance for it to attack back. Big scary thing that's done absolutely nothing. Alright. So it's going to keep moving forward. Hopefully there's a few useful items around. Alright, I can see you hiding in the corner there, but I don't think I've got any ripping range unless I swap back to the bayonet. It looks like I've lured him out anyway. But I can use one of my abilities, so I might as well do that. Just to show what it looks like. There you go. Um, I'm assuming the wind-up also has some attacks to it, because otherwise I'm literally better off just whacking. This great sword used to be truck ton of damage. And considering it's a big weapon, you swing on it, it's not too bad. Thinking of Dark Souls when I don't have the actual stats to use weapons, but compared to that, it's doing extremely well. <laughs> if I was doing a Dark Souls with a wrong weapon, I would have no ability to swing this. And that's a lot of guys. Oh, a lot more guys. Oof. Alright, let me try to get to semi safety and take these down one by one. I'm gonna actually swap to the gun. And I've made this worse myself again, anyway. Yes, I have. 
Alright, so I've got about three people to deal with at this point. Let's... Okay, that was okay. It looked alright. I much preferred the old weapon for that. Uh, luckily, these guys seem to be dropping pretty easily. That was nowhere near as bad as I first thought when I saw four or five enemies dropping around me. Um, awesome. Last time I went through there, I managed to just pull out one at a time, uh, purely by fluke, so I panicked a fair bit there. I'm going to have to accept that. Let's see if I can sneak up at least one of these guys. No. Still trying to get used to that back step. So, at least uh, when I was playing secure, I got way too used to the fact that it would actually say... Um, red mark when you're in backstab range, and this game doesn't quite have that luxury. So that's going to take a little bit to get used to. Alright, awesome, I've got a first broadsword, which I'll probably end up swapping to in a little bit. But let's just clear out this area. I just, I did want to trap you. Oh, luckily this broadsword is absolutely wrecking through shit. So we're pretty good. Um, that blue bar is for focus. Um, you're meant to be able to knock guys into the air when you've got it, um, but I haven't quite gotten used to that yet. Um, or figured out the button command for it, to be perfectly blunt. So once I figure that out, <laughs> I'll definitely try doing it. Alright, looks like there's a guy down here. Hopefully a nice item for my troubles. Ooh, uh, looks like some poison for my troubles, but this icon is understood. Um, I'm going to have to start looking in the roof, I think. Vivifier. What on earth does that do? Uh, let's quickly try finding my inventory. Vivifier, used to return to the last... Okay, so it's basically just a way to return to the last mistletoe or bonfire, whatever language you prefer to think of. Got 2k experience, or haze as it's called, so I think I'll just abuse that to unlock a few more skills. And there's also a very scary looking man over there. Is that an item which I forgot to pick up? It is an item I forgot to pick up. Let's get that very quickly. Regen extension factor. Now this is basically just an extra ability to regen, so now I can do it four times rather than the three times. And that's permanent, which is pretty awesome. Alright. So, I think I'll just do some quick leveling up and get some new skills, and I will end this video here. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and leave any comments down below for what you'd like to improve or change on these videos. Hope to see you next time, thanks for watching.